The Hunter Biden corruption scandal is finally blowing up after months of it being basically ignored by the media. Uh, so rather than just jumping straight to the point, I think it's worth setting this up a bit so you understand sort of the more full context of this. Um, I'm just going to begin in August, but that's actually not where the story starts. But the New York Post deserve full honours for having done such thorough and excellent investigative reporting into this. Uh, but let's contextualise it. As they reported in August 2020, uh, the Democratic National Committee, uh, in fact, if you can scroll up just a little bit so we can see the face, because the face is important here, right? Hunter Biden, look at Hunter Biden's concerned, sincere expression. Look at him, he, he's trying to persuade you honestly, openly of something, or at least that's the impression he's trying to give. He said that his father was honest and was someone who will never let you down. And his sister as well took turns praising their father. I, we want to tell you what kind of president our dad will be. He will be tough. He will be honest. Well, I believe it. I'm persuaded. Uh, I'm not very persuaded in the light of another New York Post article, in fact, uh, when on the 23rd of September, they published uh, this the, the their article about the Senate reports that informed us that Hunter Biden had received $3.5 million in a wire transfer from the wife of a Russian billionaire. Why? Well, we don't know. This came from Elena Baturina, the richest woman in Moscow and the widow of Yuri Luzkov, the former mayor of Moscow. Senate Republicans uh, revealed this uh, in their report on the younger Biden's work in Ukraine. Baturina became Russia's fem only female billionaire when her plastics company Intenko received a series of Moscow municipal contracts while her husband was mayor in uh, providing background on the businesswoman. So already you can see this is nepotism. Uh, and cronyism uh, going on already, and Hunter Biden seems to have been some kind of beneficiary of this. The report described her involvement with Biden as, quote, a financial relationship, but declined to delve deeper into why the wire transfer was made. So we don't know why she was giving Hunter Biden three and a half million dollars, but I'm sure it's on the up and up. Fast forward to October, uh, 14th of October, and the Hunter Biden laptop has been found and uh, given to a copy of this given to Rudy Giuliani and the FBI. So what happened with the in the case of the Hunter Biden laptop is that Hunter Biden in I think it was 2019 uh, had this laptop. He needed it repaired. He drops it off in a sort of local laptop repair shop and just fails to go and pick it up. And through a confluence of circumstances, the owner of the lab uh, the, the owner of the shop ends up looking at the laptop finds all the stuff on it and then decides to alert the authorities uh, and giuliani's team um but anyway as the new york post reveal uh, the smoking gun email as they title it reveals how hunter biden introduced ukrainian businessmen to his vice presidential dad as they report hunter biden introduced his father then vice president joe biden to a top executive at a ukrainian energy firm less than a year before the elder biden pressured government officials in ukraine into firing a prosecutor who was investigating the company according to the emails that were obtained by the post um again we have evidence, video evidence of Joe Biden just admitting this at um, at, a, at a conference. I, I can't remember which one it was, but you can easily find it by searching for it. And I probably I should have prepared it for this. But Joe Biden just came out and admitting this. You know, goddamn, within within an hour we'd got rid of the guy. The never before real, revealed meeting is mentioned in a message of appreciation that Vadim Por Porizkia. Uh, an advisor to the board of Burisma allegedly sent Hunter Biden on the 17th of April 2015, about a year after Hunter Biden had joined Burisma at the reported salary of up to $50,000 a month. This, in an interview with ABC News, Hunter Biden again had just admitted, well, if my surname wasn't Biden, I wouldn't be on the board of Burisma. So again, this looks deeply corrupt. And this is just a pattern that goes on and on and on. And it's hard to paint this in a way that doesn't that, that is sympathetic, that doesn't look like open corruption. Dear Hunter, thank you for inviting me to DC and giving me an opportunity to meet your father and spend some time together. It's really an honour and a pleasure, the email reads. An email uh, from May 2014 shows Por Poraski, uh, reportedly Burisma's number three executive, asking Hunter for advice on how you could use your influence on the company's behalf. The correspondence, which flies in the face of Joe Biden's claim that he had never spoken to his son about his overseas business dealings, is contained in a massive trove of data recovered from the laptop computer. All of his emails were on this computer. All of these emails were on Hunter Biden's computer. And Hunter Biden just left them like an idiot in this laptop repair shop and just didn't go back for it. I mean, I don't know what he thought he had 
to do that was more important than that. But then I've never smoked crack, so I can't pass judgment there, I suppose. Come to the 22nd of October, and again, we're, we're citing the New York Post for all of this, because the New York Post has been doing the yeoman's work in all of this. Um, and this is very interesting. Hunter Biden's ex-business partner told Joe, <laughs> told Hunter Biden... Uh, t told, don't mention Joe in text message. So one of Hunter Biden's business part partners was told this during a text message exchange with a fellow partner regarding a business being formed with Chinese investors, a fresh cash of records revealed. Don't mention Joe being involved. It's only when you are face to face. You, I know, you know, that, but that, 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 I know, you know that, but they are paranoid, says James G Gilliar instructed Bublinsky uh, in 2017, according to these emails. Uh, well, WhatsApp messages, I think they were, actually. Uh, in response, Bublinsky wrote, OK, they should be paranoid about things. For real, Gilliar replied on WhatsApp. Uh, it's unclear who they refer to, but in another message sent the same day, Bublinsky told Gilliar, you need to stress to H, which is taken to mean Hunter, does he want to be the reason or factor that blows up his dad's campaign? Things need to be done right and protective of that fact. So at this point, how could you claim that this was anything other than naked corruption? This this is what I would expect to find if I was arranging the same sorts of things. You know, don't mention it in text. Only say these things face to face, etc., etc. But uh, at three uh, at four o'clock that same day, Hunter Biden sent Bublinsky a message that said, "Dad, not uh, in now until 11. Uh, let me uh, meet Jim at 10 at Beverly Hilton where he's staying. So, again, he's arranging mi uh, business meetings off the record with his father, with these uh, energy executives and these corporate executives who have got lots of money because they want him to promote their interests. To Joe Biden, who was at the time uh, not the president's uh, vice president, but this is just one of those uh, sort of things. He was previously the vice president, obviously. Um, and so... Eight hours later, Bublinsky sends a message to Jim Biden, which is Joe Biden's young brother, uh, said, great to meet you and spend some time together. Please thank Joe for his time. It was great to talk. Uh, thanks, Tony B. So that seems to be an admission that he was hanging out with Joe Biden and speaking to him. In, meanwhile, in the apparent meeting between uh, and the warning, uh, sorry, between the apparent meeting and the warning to Bublinsky, not to say Joe Biden's name in the in the emails or in the in the text, Gillian sent a uh, uh, a May 13th, 2017 email to Bublinsky, Hunter Biden, and the fourth partner, Rob Walker, about their formation of that new company. This is the 10% going to the big guy, uh, which showed the four partners each getting 20% shares in the business, with 10% going to Jim, uh, presumably his brother, and 10% that Hunter, H, is going to hold for the big guy. Uh, 21st of October, this became apparent that this was connected to um, the FBI. FBI was launching a money laundering probe against, uh, presumably against Hunter Biden and the Biden family. And uh, the FBI subpoenaed Hunter Biden's computer and the hard drive uh, came in connection with a money laundering investigation, according to uh, documents obtained by Fox News. So the FBI are aware of this and they are looking into it and they have subpoenaed his laptop. Uh, so what was the response from this? Well, ignorance. Public feigned ignorance. We are not paying attention. We're pretending this isn't happening. We've got nothing to say about it. Until someone like Chuck Schumer on the 22nd of October just came out and said, well, hang on a second. Uh, let's not have an investigation into Hunter Biden in the, in the Biden laptop. Why? I mean, Senate Minority Leader, as reported by media Mediaite, uh, so not, not like a Republican source or something, um, which you could accuse the New York Post of being, which, I mean, is fair, I suppose. But that doesn't that's not to say their reporting is accurate, but I, I just want to show that I'm not being deliberately partisan with what I'm picking here. Um, but anyway, Chuck Schumer and Senator Ron Wyden of Oregon uh, are calling on the FBI to refrain from opening any investigation of Democratic presidential nominee Joe, ba Joe Biden's family prior to the 2020 election. Why would you do that? Why? If there, like, if there is like real evidence of corruption it seems to be the open statements because we have the emails because hunter biden and the whatsapp messages because hunter biden was stupid enough to just leave this laptop with some rando then why would this not be of public interest to the electorate who uh joe biden is trying to persuade to vote for them 
if you're directly involved in taking foreign money through your son and, and a bunch of Russian, Ukrainian, and Chinese businesses, the, te the 10 percent for the big guy was from a Chinese company that was starting or getting involved in. Uh, why would that not be of interest to the American people? I mean, that seems deeply important to me. And so, anyway, he says, We write regarding press reports concerning materials allegedly describing activities by Hunter Biden found on a laptop in a Delaware repair shop. The two wrote in a, in a letter, We are deeply concerned about the possibility that in, these uh, in the response to these reports, the Trump administration will take actions before Election Day that would seek to damage the Democratic presidential candidate and undermine the rule of law. The balls on this man to suggest that it's Trump or the, the, the government looking in to what appear to be really quite solid allegations of corruption as undermining the rule of law is just like, right, okay, there's no further conversation to be had with Chuck Schumer. He's a lunatic or he's in on it. It's one of the two, in my opinion. Anyway, the FBI, he says, has a critical role to play in safeguarding our elections and in partnership with the intelligence community is responsible for exposing and combating both foreign cyber and influence efforts targeting our electoral process. Oh, really? How about money? How about foreign money coming into Joe Biden's coffers? Do they have a role in that? I mean, they seem to think they do since they're investigating it and subpoenaing the laptop and things like this. So what about that? I mean, just, I, I can't say that, I, you know, oh, I, he's in on it or anything like that, because I just don't have any proof of that. But if I was suspicious of someone being in on something, and they then said something like this, this would just heighten my suspicions. This this does nothing to assuage my concerns about Chuck Schumer being involved with this kind of web of corruption that is evident and has been uncovered through Hunter Biden's laziness. And the, the funny thing about it is that he got reprimanded by the people he was, uh, I guess we can say conspiring with, uh, in, in, in this thing. You don't want to blow up your dad's campaign. In carrying out this critical national security mission, law enforcement's handling of this matter must be a politi above politics and a beyond reproach. We therefore ask, we urge you to resist pressure from Trump and other partisan actors to take any actions intended to benefit President Trump politically on the eve of the election. Succumbing to such pressure would deeply undermine our national security interests and the credibility of law enforcement and would have dev devastating consequences for the resiliency of our democracy. Yeah, it will have devastating consequences for the resiliency of their democracy. That's what will happen. Because imagine if Joe Biden goes down over this. Imagine all of the things he's going to end up drawing into it. It would be staggering. Anyway, on the other side of this, you have Rudy Giuliani, who takes credit for getting the FBI to investigate. He says, I finally got the FBI to start investigating a laptop they've had for over eight months, and it turns out to be valid and incriminates crooked Biden and the Biden crime family. So do we get an apology from Twitter, or he says Twitter, uh, Facebook, NBC, CBS, ABC, CNN, etc.? No. You get silence from them, just like you had silence from them when it came up the running up to the election on this subject. And in the same way that, that Twitter and Facebook had suppressed this story, Facebook deranked it, Twitter outright banned it. The New York Post were prevented from tweeting, even though this was a story of legitimate public interest and nobody is challenging the facts. Nobody is saying, oh, this isn't the case. And the only thing that you can hear in response to this is, well, this might be Russian disinformation. Prove it. Show me some proof. We, we know that Hunter Biden dropped that laptop off. We know that the, the owner in Delaware, we've got his statements where he's like, well, I just had a look into it. We, we don't have any evidence that the Russians are involved. We have evidence that the Russians are involved in funneling money to Joe Biden, if that's the direction you want to go in this with. But I, I don't think it is, is it? You know, I don't think that Schumer and the rest would want to do that. But anyway, uh, come the 29th of October, Hunter Biden finally admits that he is under a federal investigation for tax affairs. Uh, as reported by the Federalist, uh, again, who have been doing yeoman's work on this sort of stuff, uh, the Department of Justice took the rare step to confirm the existence of an ongoing investigation Thursday, informing, uh, confirming to Sinclair that the FBI is still conducting a federal money laundering probe into the Biden family. They must have so much evidence of this at this point, because the public have so much evidence of this at this point. They must have all of this and more. According to Sinclair's James Rose, former Fox News correspondent, former Biden business associate turned whistleblower called Tony Bobulinski, 
the one we were referencing earlier, was interviewed by the FBI for five hours on Friday. I think Joe Biden and the Biden family is compromised, Bobolinsky said on the Fox News T uh, Tucker Carlson segment, uh, which he dedicated an hour to outlining this. And again, Tucker has been doing great work on this. There's a, there is at least a good team of people, right? So who is Tony Bobolinsky? Well, Heavy.com have got, done one of their five fast facts articles, which are always very useful. He is the former business partner of Hunter Biden, who says that Joe Biden was involved in business dealings with China. We seem to have proof of all this. Uh, he said on Wednesday, October the 21st, that the former vice president was a willing and eager participant in a family scheme to make millions of dollars by partnering with a shady Chinese communist firm. According to the New York Post, Michael Goodwin, the Navy veteran said that he was the CEO of a holding company partnership between the Chinese firm and the Bidens that includes Hunter, Joe, and Joe's brother Jim, the outlet reported. The firm wasn't in it for the money, but for the political or influence investment, Bobolinsky said. I've seen Vice President Biden saying he's never talked to Hunter about business. I've seen firsthand that's not true, because it wasn't just Hunter's business. They, they said they were putting the Biden family name and its legacy on the line. We have seen the evidence of this from Hunter Biden's emails. We have the evidence of them arranging this. We now have his business partner as a whistleblower saying, well, I was involved. I did it with him. They were doing it for political influence. It wasn't even necessarily about the money. <laughs> like Joe Biden saying China isn't going to eat our lunch. No, you're going to eat our lunch. <laughs> you're the one doing this. You're the one selling your country out to foreign powers for your own enrichment. And as as the allegation goes, of political influence. This is unreal. This is, I, I can't believe that we have all of this information at this point. But anyway, the way that the media has been reporting this, let's just go for like the New York Times reporting of it, right? On October the 21st, when this all started first coming out, the New York Times dismisses this, essentially. Listen to the way they framed this. Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube have invested a significant amount of time and money trying to avoid the mistakes during, made during the 2016 election the election of Donald Trump. A test of those new policies came last week when the New York Post published a story that contained supposedly incriminating documents and pictures taken from the laptop of Hunter Biden. The, prov the provenance and authenticity of that information is still in question, and Joe Biden's campaign has rejected the assertions. While YouTube largely did nothing, Facebook deprioritized the post story, and Twitter initially moved to ban all the links to the piece on its platform. These actions infuriated some Republican lawmakers and conservative media figures who accused the social media networks of censorship and election interference. It's because it is. <laughs> it is censorship, and it is election interference, because this is directly tied to the public interest and what people will vote on. If people are widely aware that Hunter Biden is taking millions of dollars from Russia, Ukraine and China under the table through a series of shell companies organized by his son, that looks really bad. And people aren't going to vote for that. But I don't think people are going to vote for corruption, naked, outright corruption like is happening here. And so the framing has raised up a level. We're not talking... In the, uh, in the sort of accusations, we're talking about other people making the accusations. And you notice the, uh, you know, the, uh, the way it's like supposedly incriminating documents, the authenticity of which is still in question. Well, not according to the FBI. The FBI have said now that these, these things are true. They've been investigating for years now, but we'll get to that. And then the next day, the New York Post, uh, the New York Times again, publish a Hunter Biden, what we know and what we don't know. They essentially just list the allegations, right? But again, they, they accept the, the final word in all of these arguments and in all of these articles are, are, are always taken uncritically from the Democrats. The, the Post article relied on documents purportedly taken from the computer to try to buttress an unsubstantiated argument peddled by Giuliani and other Trump supporters that as vice president, Mr. Biden had shaped American foreign policy in Ukraine to benefit his son. That seems to be something we can confirm. But unsubstantiated, trying to buttress. He's peddling it. You know, the, the, the type of language they use to refer to the people making the allegations is designed to discredit them. And then you just get these categoric statements like this. They say, 
Mr. Biden has long said he knew nothing about his son's business activities in Ukraine, but the article suggests that the former vice president met with an advisor to the Ukrainian energy company whose board Hunter Biden sat on, Burisma Holdings. The article referred to an email that the advisor had sent to Hunter Biden thanking him for the opportunity to meet his father. A Biden spokesman for the campaign said that Mr. Biden's official schedules did not show a meeting between the two men. A lawyer for Hunter Biden, George Messias, said uh, the purported meeting never happened. Well, there we go. No need to investigate any further then. I can't believe the under-the-table meeting that would be illegal and implicate Joe Biden directly in the corruption isn't written on his official schedule. Shocking. I would have thought that would have been there. Why can't the public see his official schedule that he's meeting with the, the, the executives of the Board of Burisma <laughs> organised by his son? Why can't they see that? Unsurprisingly, they're like, well, that didn't happen. Well, okay, well, if, if the people being accused have said it didn't happen, then I guess there's no further investigation needed. Is there New York, po New York Times? Anyway, fast forward to today. Or yesterday, I believe this was actually. Um... Radio silence, effectively, since then. They're not interested in talking about this. But now that they think Joe Biden has won, suddenly we can talk about it. They are forced to admit that Hunter Biden, uh, that this is the case, now that Hunter Biden has published his own statement on it. But the article is still strategically pro-Biden. As they say, the newly disclosed federal tax investigation into his son will test President-elect Joseph R. Biden Jr.'s stated commitment to independent law enforcement while leaving him in a no-win situation that could prove distracting at best and politically and legally perilous at worst. So this is being framed from a very pro-Biden position. Biden is their man, and what are the challenges he faces? Oh, how can he overcome these? We have some advice. Unless President Trump's Justice Department clears Hunter Biden of wrongdoing before leaving office, the new president will confront the prospect of his own newly installed administration deciding how or whether to proceed with an inquiry that could expose his son to criminal prosecution. Already some Republicans are demanding a special counsel be appointed to insulate the case from political influence. As if we think for a second that Joe Biden is going to be like, well, that's a good point. My son was being corrupt and it does seem that I was receiving loads of that money. I guess we're going to have to go through the investigation that will implicate not only my son, but me. That's not going to happen. No one, no one in their right mind would think, I mean, given the, given the evidence of corruption that we just have here, just going through in this in this podcast, there's no way in hell anyone reasonable, rational, who is not invested in either side would come away from this thinking, well, yeah, Joe Biden will do that investigation. There's nothing to worry about there. Unreal. Unreal. But anyway, as CBS News reported, this investigation has been going on since 2018. Uh, as they say, federal prosecutors are investigating Hunter Biden's tax affairs, according to a statement made by his son. Uh, two sources familiar with the investigation tell CBS that the tax investigation of Hunter Biden began in 2018. The sources explained that during the election season, the investigation went quiet, otherwise known as going covert, and noted that it would violated policy at the FBI and Department of Justice by taking any, quote, overt steps that would affect the election. That seems to be like election meddling to me. Why would you keep that quiet, covert, during the election? What's the, re what's the requirement? Where is it written that that is a requirement? Because, if anything, it seems like you're trying to help bolster the Biden's case, which makes it very concerning um, that this, this is being done. And yesterday, the Wall Street Journal published an article that suggested that Bill Barr had worked to keep Hunter Biden's probes from the public view during the election, which would explain Bill Barr's reluctance to sort of... Um, endorse the uh, constitutionalists' argument against what appears to be apparent election fraud or suspicions of election fraud in the four battleground states in which the Texas lawsuit has been filed. So, who knows? Who knows who's involved? Who knows why? Why? Why would they do this? We need answers. We need explanations as to why the FBI decided, well, it's just not in the public interest to make this something that people know about during the election season. At, uh, but finally, Joe Biden, just to be clear, is still not the president-elect. A joint com congressional committee on the inaugural ceremonies voted down a resolution to acknowledge Joe Biden as the president-elect, uh, as Trump and other Republicans continued their lawsuits challenging the results in the courts. And this is according to several members of the bipartisan panel, which contains three Republicans and three Democrats. And so this is not merely Republican dominance of an institution. This is because things are happening. There is a process. But anyway, after all of this, 
This is all public. This is all well reported. New York Post being, was it, America's most fourth most popular newspaper. Um, so it's not like millions of people haven't seen these things. Time magazine have still put Joe Biden and Kamala Harris as their people of the year, I guess. Or, you know, I don't know why the two of them are under person of the year. But this has got to age badly. I mean, not probably not quite as badly as them naming Adolf Hitler as person of the year. But when all of this finally comes out and finally is shown to courts and gone through in detail, surely Joe Biden and his reputation will have been utterly, utterly destroyed.